Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the call manager publisher. So in the last video, uh, I just demonstrated how to modify the ISO file in order to achieve uh, or meet your requirements. But we are not going to install 10.5.2. We are going to install 10.5.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically modify the ISO file to 10.5.1 and then click on OK and then I'll click on power on this virtual machine so that we can install the call manager. So the call in manager installation generally takes around a couple of hours, maybe minimum one hour or one and a half hours at least, uh, which depends on your hardware uh, uh, size as well. Like if you are having a good virtual memory and uh, configuration and the speed of your hardware is very good, then the installation may happen quicker, but otherwise it'll take minimum two hours, one, one and a half to two hours. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about the step-by-step -step procedure here. So first and the foremost is basically um, it is going to check for the hardware, but we are modifying, we have modified the OS uh, file in such a way that it'll bypass the hardware check here. So this is not the one which we have modified uh, for the Unity connection. So definitely I'll have one which is modified for the Unity connection and we'll be using that as well. So at this moment, let's focus on installing the call manager publisher. So I'll click on OK here. Here it is asking, do you want to proceed with the install? We'll click on yes. Here uh, it is asking uh, platform installation wizard and then we'll click on uh, proceed. We'll not skip or we'll not cancel. Here it is asking, do you want to apply a patch for an upgrade? We'll say no. This is basic installation option, so we'll continue. Here we have to select the time zone. So I'm in uh, India, so I'll select as Kolkata. Asia, Kolkata. So based on your uh, region uh, time zone, you can select your location. So after selecting this, you can put a tab and then click on OK. In the NIC settings here, we are not going to uh, do anything. We are going to click on continue. Here it is asking you want to change the MTU size for the OS default. Uh, generally, it is not recommended to change the MTU for uh, the devices. So we'll select as no. So here is asking, do you want to configure uh, DHCP or you want to have a static IP address? So we'll say no for DHCP. Here it is asking for the host name. So our host name is UCCINCUCMA. This is the host name and the IP address is 192.168.1.150 and subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and the gateway address is 192.168.1.1. Uh, if you remember the picture, so here we see the default router, default gateway is 192.168.1.1 and the publisher IP address is 192.168.1.150. And click on OK. Do you want to enable DNS? So we'll say yes to DNS. So that it is asking for the DNS server. So we'll enter the DNS server IP address 192.168.1.175. So if you see the picture here again, uh, so we are using this as a DNS server 192.168.1.175, which is a Windows server. And in the domain name, we are going to put it as uccollabing.com. Uh, we don't have a secondary DNS, so we are keeping this as blank. It is asking for the administrator password, put a administrator password, make sure you remember it. Okay, so I'll click on okay. So it is asking for the organization. So I'll type as you see collabing. Okay. So here you have to type the certificate information like organization unit. It can be anything like for your lab purpose, you can type anything the way you want, unit, location, state, country. So it does not matter for your lab. Click on okay. Is this server the first node in your cluster? So it is going to be yes, because we are going to install the publisher. So it is going to be yes here. 
in the NTP server, as I see, like we are using uh, our main router as an NTP server 192.168.1.1. So that's the NTP server. So we'll key in that IP address. If you have multiple NTP server, you can key in the multiple server address in one, two, three, four, five. It's asking for another password. So we'll put in the password here. So this is a system security password, which you have to key in and make sure you remember it. Do you want to enable SMTP? We'll say no, we don't want to enable SMTP. Here it is asking like a smart call home page enable. Uh, so, but we don't want anything to be enabled at this moment. So uh, we'll configure, we'll disable all call, all call home on the system start. Click on okay. It's asking for the application username. So we'll put it as administrator again. So this is used uh, so that you can log into the call manager. So now it is asking you uh, the platform configuration is complete. Click uh, select OK to continue or back to the to change the configuration. In case if you want to change any of the configuration, you can click on back. Otherwise click on OK and then solution will proceed. So I hit OK. So as you see, the installation has started. So we'll what we'll do is we'll wait for the installation to be completed. So it may take uh, one hour, one and a half hours from now for the installation to complete it. So once the installation is completed, I'll resume the video. I'll pause the video for now. Okay, so we are back and the installation of the call manager has been completed. So let's try to access the call manager from the system. So yes, call manager is accessible. It does not work pretty well with Internet Explorer. So what I'll do is I'll download the Firefox or Chrome in this particular uh, machine, Windows Server. So it will not create any sort of problem. But however, the call manager has been installed correctly. So. Let me try doing it from my Chrome machine. Uh, this machine is not domain joined, so what I'll do is I'll access this call manager using the IP address. Okay, so the call manager is accessible. And what we uh, can do is we'll enable the services on the call manager. So we'll go to the serviceability. Tools service activation. And then you enable all the important services. Uh, for now, I'll check all the services because uh, th this is not a production system. So that's the reason we check all the services. Otherwise, in the production system, you have to check these services according to the requirement. So I'll click on Save. So it'll take a couple of minutes for the services to come up. I'll pause the video for the time and once the services are up, I'll resume the video. Okay, so all the services are up. So in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to install subscribers and uh, we'll see how to add subscribers and install them. Uh, we'll try to install call manager subscribers only in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Have a wonderful day ahead.